So you guys have asked me some questions. I'm gonna answer them. Question number one is from Burkan, XK1. And Birkin says, should everyone whip it out? Now, if you don't know who Birkin is, he's an absolute hall of fame. In 20 years from now, 30, 40, 50 years from now, people will look back at this time of, the, of year and they'll realize how important Birkin is. If you don't know who he is, shout out to Birkin. He's an absolute legend. And yes, the answer is everyone should do it. Next question is from Charlie.Skull. And Charlie says, what's your favorite supercar? That's a fantastic question. Matter of fact, that's probably my favorite question ever. Now, I've had the pleasure to drive a, a couple of supercars at this point, and they all have different pros and cons. Some of them are more obviously built for long term, some of them are more built for just 0 to 60, and so on and so on. I think overall, the most fun I've had was the 458. Naturally aspirated, you just hear the engine right in your fucking ears, it's right behind you. And the 458 was super, super fun. And that was actually one of my first ever supercars that I've driven. I think probably the second would be the 720S Novitec. I had the pleasure to drive that in Dubai. That was so much fun, as you can imagine, with the Novitec kit on it. It sounded incredible. It was probably the fastest car I've driven, um, and it was super nice. But overall, I've driven probably about seven, eight now, and I just can't wait to fucking start buying them. Now, next question is from Ronnie Master 420 what a username fantastic ronnie says how long did you take to realize ofm is life-changing yeah interesting question i mean it never was like a i woke up one day and i was like oh my god this is it i'm gonna change my life with this shit but it was i guess like i guess if, if the question was framed a little bit differently which was when did you really realize that ofm is what you want to go into and it's going to be the better vehicle for you to make a lot more money isn't initially when I started, right? So when I started, I, I was running a, a marketing agency and I was working with lawyers at the time. I had four clients, right? Four law firms. And at the, at the time, I think I was making about 15, 20,000 a month just from the law firms, you know, all the clients combined. And I started working with one model. This is when I was back in Spain. And about two, three months into working with just one model, I was pretty much making just thereabouts the same with one model than I was in my entire marketing agency. You know, there was a time, I believe a couple of them left, of course, and I had like two, two left. And I just realized that it was so much easier, so much less hassle. I didn't have to deal with paid ads. I didn't have to deal with Mark Zuckerberg being a cunt. So that's when I realized that OFM is definitely the way to go down. Caleb underscore underscore Tenahau. Hopefully I pronounced that right. Now Caleb says, what are some ways to build good rapport with subs? Get up the good work. Thank you very much. Now, what are some good ways to build rapport? I mean, keep it dead simple, right, bro? Your job is to basically get to know them a little bit, right? The same as if you're doing a sales school, for example, you'd wanna get to know them a little bit, build that rapport, find your commonalities and so on. So really what, what is rapport? How do you build rapport? It's by simply figuring out what are they really into, right? Fuck the basics like, oh, where are you from? And bullshit like that, how old are you? Fuck that. What are they into, right? Maybe they, what do they do for work? What are their hobbies? I mean, obviously, if we're talking about OnlyFans specifically, what are they into? Like, what are their fetishes? Why have they subscribed to your model? Things of that nature. And the more you learn about these different things from each sub, as long as they're actually spending money with you, because you don't want to waste fucking time, then you want to go into the notes section of that subscriber's account and add in the notes about them, right? So what are their hobbies? What do they do for work? Things of that nature. Uh, and how, that's how to build a great report with subs. I mean, pretty much it's, it's, it's that fucking simple. The mistake I want you to look out for is you don't want to build rapport with people who are just going to waste your fucking time. Also, by the way, I didn't even mention, as you can probably tell, I'm not in my typical office. I'm in my Latvian fucking presidential suite. <laughs> this place is absolutely nuts. Um, so I thought I'd record a little video. I've got some time to kill. Um, but I'm here in Latvia for uh, an event that I'm hosting, which will probably be one of the next YouTube videos. I'm super, super excited about it. Now, next question is from Martin Kilp. And Martin says, what's the biggest negative side of being wealthy? First of all, I, I definitely don't class myself as wealthy. I think I'm doing okay for my, for my age bracket, statistically, but mentally I feel like I'm still like nowhere near where I wanna get to. But in terms of like making a lot of money, what's like the negatives, there, there is a lot. I know it's like, and this is quite funny as well, when I was first starting out, I'd always look at some fucker online or like a celebrity talking about, oh, I find it really difficult to do this and this and this is so hard and blah, blah. And I'd be like, shut the fuck up, bro. Like people were killed to be in your position. The, the life is, your life isn't that fucking hard, right? But it's funny, it's like, there's a, there's a true saying, right? Money can only solve money problems. And then you're just left with personal issues, right? And that's really it. And I think 
Tate says this as well. It's, it's really, really true. Money really is just an amplifier of who you are. So if you are already somebody who is very giving, you always try to help people, you always try to make people laugh and feel better once they meet you and you're just an overall nice person, money will make, help you help more people, reach more people, make more people happy. If you're a bit of a dickhead, uh, maybe you're, you know, I wouldn't say depressed, but you know, you're, you're quite going down the fucking wrong, wrong way. Money is gonna amplify that. You're probably gonna spend more time doing the things that you shouldn't be. It's gonna make you feel even worse and so on and so on. But it's a great question. I think one one thing that I can put my finger on, such as like a, like a, a practical thing that I can mention is just because people assume that you're wealthy, people tend to take the piss and try to charge a lot more than what they normally do. So like there's a lot of people that try and work with me and there's these kids that are asking me to pay them $8,000 a month to run my TikTok. Motherfucker, I ain't paying you eight grand to run a TikTok, no way. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm honestly trying to think, but as you can probably imagine, there isn't that many fucking issues. Money does solve a lot of problems. So it's, it's genuinely, I'm sitting there, I'm trying to fucking think like what are negatives, but there isn't that many, just make a lot of money. Next question, Michael Partlow. Think of your question, Michael. He says, what's your craziest story you can tell us? <laughs> I was waiting for somebody to ask me this, right? This is going to be the strap yourself in, boys, right? The, grab your popcorn. This is going to be the craziest fucking story. And I haven't ever told this before. So this is quite a long story. So I'm going to try and keep it somewhat short for the YouTube video. Now, we went to Naples in Italy. So it was my birthday, October. We, we fly to Naples. And also, this is Naples in Italy, South Italy. I've been to Milan once before, and I was assuming that Naples is gonna be somewhat similar to Milan. It's near Amalfi Coast, Amalfi Coast is beautiful. Milan was great, I absolutely loved it. And I thought Naples was gonna be fucking the same, right? It's not that fucking far. Um, turns out Naples, unfortunately, I'm very sorry if you live there, but it's a complete fucking shit hole. It is like, it's the definition of a failed society. Like there's buildings that have like breaking down, there's wood like on the windows, homeless people everywhere, trash, boom, boom. And I didn't know this, right, until I got there. And anyway, we also rented an F8 uh, Ferrari, um, F8 uh, Tributo. It was a brand new Ferrari, beautiful. And I was assuming that, you know, there's gonna be loads of other supercars. Like if you've ever been to Milan, you, you walk every corner of the street and there's always a supercar driving past. And I thought it was gonna be the same thing, which is gonna blend in. That was not the case. Um, we were literally the only supercar there, let alone even a fucking sports car, right? Anyway, the story is, I'm driving, I'm cruising, right, in my F8. Also, I was wearing a, a tuxedo at this point, right? I was wearing a suit. Don't ask me why, I'm wearing a suit. I got my business partner, Harry, in the passenger seat here. He's also wearing a tuxedo. We're both chilling, we're driving. Also, by this point, it's roughly about 9, 10 p.m. in the evening. And um, it's, it's like a one-way lane, right? There's a car in front of me, there's a car behind me, traffic, we're stuck. Very fucking hot, right? It's very fucking hot at this point. So I roll down a window. You can probably imagine where this is going. Also, uh, literally two days before this, I just bought that Rolex. I just bought my Rolex for my birthday. So I was dead happy, I was gas, wearing my tuxedo, driving like a fucking boss. Got my uh, hand out the window, right? There's mopeds going past, left, right, and center. Boom, 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 boom. Mopeds always, always, always passing because of traffic, whatever. And there's a moped that pulls up, two guys in a moped, right? The guy on the back of the moped just, just goes like this, like taps me on my shoulder. And I just thought, oh, he's gonna say like, nice car, bro, whatever, like, can you, can you fucking make it rev or something? So I just went, oh, you're right. And I just looked back and I thought he was just gonna go or take a picture or something. That motherfucker had different intentions. The guy on the back of the ped decides to jump off of the ped, grabs my wrist, <laughs> grabs my fucking hand and is pulling it out of the fucking uh, window. And uh, he must've been some fucking 16, 70 year old fucking little yob because he didn't know how to undo the Rolex, right? He was just, he was literally, he's all, I'm getting robbed at this point, by the way, right? If you haven't realized, I'm getting fucking robbed. All he's trying to do is just fucking do this with my Rolex. It's not quite, it's not quite how it works. You can't rip the Rolex off of my wrist. So you have to go like this, then like that. This guy's fucking doing it, right? I have, I obviously I've got a lot of adrenaline at this point. And also on top of that, I just fucking bought this watch, right? So in my head, I'm thinking, fuck you, cunt. I'm not about to give you my watch that I just worked really fucking hard for and I bought for my birthday, for myself. So I decide, fuck you. Yeah. Uh, my mother's life, this is a true story. I'm punching him back, right? Um, and then also by this point, Harry, my business partner, he does, he undoes his seatbelt and my one, like really low key. He undoes our seatbelts. 
and uh, he, he opens the door and he starts sneaking around the back of the Ferrari. Now, bear in mind, the F8 Tributo, you know, if you're standing up, it's very, very fucking low. It's a low car, right? A supercar. So Harry's sneaking around the back like this, right? As Harry is sneaking around the back of the Ferrari, the guy who's like pulling my fucking wrist out and he realized, all right, this guy is not a pussy. He's not just going to take his watch off. He's hitting me back. He thinks, fuck you, cunt, in your fucking F.A. Ferrari. He undoes his jacket, pulls out a Glock and puts it in my uh, to my head, right? Like this. So now I'm like, all right, I'm not going to fucking get a bullet in my head for a fucking Rolex. Fine, whatever. Uh, so I calm down. I'm literally like this. I'm literally like this. And he's still trying to grab my wrist. But I'm, I'm kind of moving it, but I'm not punching him at this point, right? Now, Harry, as he's walking around the back of the Ferrari, Harry has not seen the gun. Nobody has seen the gun because the guy pulls it out and puts it in the car to my head. And also for context, like I said, it's like 9, 10 p.m. There are fucking thousands of people everywhere just walking, right? It's a busy street. So anyway, I've got a gun to my head at this point. Great. Um, now, Harry doesn't know there's a gun there. As Harry walks around the back of the car, he starts running at him and he fucking pushes him, right? Now, just remember again, the context, there's one guy on the ped, the guy on the back of the ped has jumped off. Now he's been pushed. As he fucking like goes backwards, he trips over, falls on the floor. The gun falls under the car, under the Ferrari. Um, and again, I don't actually know, I need to ask him, but I don't think Harry actually knew at all that there was a gun there. Listen, this story gets even fucking wilder. The gun falls under the car now. Uh, I get out because obviously, like I said, he undone both of our seatbelts. I get out of the car now and we just start stamping the fuck out of this guy. <laughs> he obviously had a helmet, so, you know, I didn't really kick his head. And also we're in, we're in tuxedos, so I had like, uh, like, like smart shoes, like, um, I don't even know what the fuck they're called. Just smart shoes, you know, with a little heel at the back. So I'm fucking, I'm hitting this guy as hard as I can, bro. Because imagine how much adrenaline I have, right? So I'm kicking this guy, I'm stomping him, stomping him. And Harry's fucking stomping this guy as well. His friend, who's still on the moped, he rides forward a little bit. And then he looks back and he sees that his fucking little buddy is on the floor about to get stomped out and die. And then also, by the way, this is the funniest part. As I'm stomping this cunt right on the floor, I'm looking at his friend <laughs> on the moped. And then I see him stop put his little um, moped on like the little, I don't even know what it's called, the little stand. And as the guy's walking towards us now, the other guy, he undoes his fucking jacket, pulls out a gun, and he's walking towards me and Harry just pointing a gun like this. I don't remember, I don't think he was saying anything. Obviously, I don't think they were English anyway, I think they were Italian. Um, but obviously at this point, me and Harry are like this, all right, all right, all right, like, you know, I'm, we're not gonna fucking die over this guy. So then me and Harry run uh, to hide behind the Ferrari, like at the back. The guy runs over, the guy on the floor like grabs his, um, grabs his handgun under the car. And as he's like going back to the, um, uh, the moped, he's like, <laughs> uh, also by this point, also uh, when the first, when the, when the guy who's walking towards us with the gun like this, that's when everybody realizes what's going on. Cause it happens so quickly. That's when all, everybody, like thousands of people realize, and they must've been shouting gun in Italian, I don't know. And everyone starts screaming and panicking and running. It, like it was fucking mental. Uh, yeah, he grabs his friend, pulls him, goes to the fucking uh, scooter, they jump on and they, they ride off. And also what was really cool is as they're riding off, it, that's when everybody, like all the public, they realize, all right, these guys are running away. The whole public tried to run after them on a moped, like they were pushing them and shit like that. I hope that story is sufficient enough when you said what's the craziest story, because that is the craziest story. Obviously, I, I wasn't fucking taking photos whilst I'm stamping them in it. When we, when we uh, got to the hotel after all this happened, I then took some photos, because like they hit me kind of like here, here. It was mainly here, where, like, where my hair is. So you, there's not that much, but I had like a bruise here, kind of like a little bit of a black eye. And then uh, all of my wrist here was like red, where this little fucking idiot was just trying to um, rip my watch off. So that was my uh, craziest story. And um, yeah, I can't wait for the next one. Next question, Jacob CBM says, before OFM, were you certain that you would be successful throughout your life? Simple answer is yes, that fucking simple. I always knew it, I genuinely always knew it. And uh, I was having a cigar with one of my friends not too long ago and we we're just talking about it, how me and my friend come from completely different backgrounds in terms of family and how we're raised, completely different. However, we have both ended up doing okay for ourselves right so the conclusion that we came to is not necessarily your upbringing i think it plays a massive part of course i think it plays a massive part but the conclusion that we came down to is it's in you it's in you as a person now i don't know if you have to be born with it or maybe like maybe both of us just as we're as we're um growing up from our childhood maybe something happened to both of us and we both wanted to make money but i believe it has to be within you i believe 
I don't think it can really be taught. Like if you wake up, like for me, for example, I cannot explain to you the feeling that I get when I wake up and I'm like, I need to make more money. And it's not about the money. I have, I'm doing okay for myself. So it's not necessarily about the tangible, like the actual number in my fucking account. It's not. It's about the challenge. That's what I really fucking enjoy. It's like, yeah, I have a nice watch, but I want a fucking, a really rare watch. Yeah, I have a, a fast car, but I want a super fucking fast car. You get what I'm trying to say? And again, it's not, and, and, and at least for me personally, it's not actually about the materialist, the actual watch itself. It's just the challenge of getting there, right? So for me, it's like, I always knew it. I swear to fucking God, I always knew it. Ever since school, I fucking hate being told what to do. That's the biggest thing I fucking hate. So if somebody tells me to do something, I'll do like everything in my power to do the opposite. That's why when this whole pandemic bullshit was going on, I was traveling the world, right? Everybody's like, no, you have to sit at home, put your mask on, put your mask on. Motherfucker, I was, that's literally when I was living the whole digital nomad lifestyle around Europe. So anyway, I always kind of knew that I was going to be successful. Next question is from Connor OFM. Did you find it difficult to find a partner considering you do OFM? <laughs> That's a funny one. Uh, short answer is no. First of all, I don't tell girls like, what the fuck do I do? I, for multiple reasons. Even if I wasn't doing OFM, even if I was a fucking shoe cleaner, it doesn't matter. Like, I don't like to tell people what I do. Obviously, this is different, but I'm talking about in person. If I meet like a friend of mine or a friend of a friend, sorry, or like a, a friend of a family member or whatever, it doesn't fucking matter. Somebody who doesn't know who I am, I'm not gonna go out of my way to tell them. And even when they ask me, I'm pretty vague. Because, I don't know, it, it very rare, like if, if it's somebody of very, very important, like of, of importance, and I feel like I need to make the, uh, a good impression, and I feel like this is a useful connection, then sure, I will tell them, you know, kind of what I've got going on, uh, what, what, what my skills are, and so on and so on. But typically, I don't tell people what the fuck I do, let alone fucking girls on dates. I mean, that's bullshit. Literally, my, and they always obviously ask, right? My, my simple answer is, I pray to God, and he provides. Simple as that. Next question right so so yeah i mean finding a partner um not really difficult not really difficult also who gives a fuck um next question alex dot valet uh alex says how to target us tiktok from other countries for only fans so alex really simple i'm gonna answer this one real quick we teach this in the online program that we've got going on. If you're interested, there is a course down below. We teach you how to start an online business with an OnlyFans. And we answer this question in full detail, right? We have an entire lesson on it. But really, really quickly. First of all, a uh, US SIM card will help. So if you order a US SIM card, so it'll give you a, a different bunch of different uh, like ideas, right? That you can do. So order a US SIM card. Marcus, where can I get a US SIM card? Google it. You'll find it. Find a US SIM card, order it, put it in your phone. Boom. Second thing, try and use a VPN. Uh, in the States, that can also help as well. And third of all, which is the best one, is find some fucker in the US who lives there, pay him to upload the content for you, right? You, you'll, uh, your model will record the content, you can edit it or your team will edit it, or if you pay this guy more, he can edit it as well. But then he's the fucker in the States who logs into your model's account and uploads it there. And if you're gonna do that, by the way, pro tip, if, if somebody's in the States and your model's in the UK, for example, right? Make sure your model does not log into the TikTok because if she does, then it fucks it all up. Then you might as well not do it. So if somebody's gonna do it in the States, make sure it's the only account that's logged in. Next question, Raf Kamar. Raf, hi Raf. Thank you for the question. Best ways to get traffic to your model's OnlyFans page. There is no best, it always varies. For example, uh, again, I was having a cigar with my friend uh, literally here yesterday and we're talking about TikTok. TikTok for the last two weeks, at the time of this recording, it is like the 20, 20th, maybe June. Um, at the time of this recording is good. So TikTok is working for the last two weeks. But the last two months before that, it was very, very shit. Like it just genuinely, it was just shit. So Instagram reels were better. So it, it always changes, right? Um, things that don't really change, at least in my opinion, um, is Reddit. Again, to be honest, actually, there was recently an update in Reddit where they got uh, rid of a bunch of bots and automation services. So Again, Reddit might be a bit shit, but typically things that work really, really well, at least for us that we found are like bot services. They, they, they don't really fuck up and it's pretty easy to then update these bot services as well. So that's something again, there's a YouTube video that I've uploaded recently on my channel, which is just about bot services. What is it? How does it work and how you can get it from us? If you're interested, go ahead and watch that video. It's on my channel. Click down below. <sighs>
boys it's way too hot i know i know this looks fucking old money look at me i have a little vest but bro it's so fucking hot in here ofm owen says what's the best way to approach models that are lacking in creative content or not active really simple what's his name owen really simple owen get rid simple bro there's so fucking many other clients out there. Don't waste your time. There's no fucking point. If you're working with a girl who's just fucking lazy, inherently doesn't want to fucking do the work and doesn't want to make money, fuck her, bro. Leave her. Just get another one. It's not that difficult. You might as well not waste your time and energy with somebody who doesn't want to make money. Alternatively, you can work with somebody who maybe isn't fucking nine out of 10 or maybe doesn't have 100K followers or whatever, but she has the work ethic and she's always there. That's who you're going to make a lot of money with. Next question is from Gio. Are you getting into boxing slash MMA? Yes, recently I've been getting into boxing. I've now been training boxing for about a month and a half, maybe perhaps two months, ever. Like that's that's ever, ever. Like I've never done it before and I'm really loving it. I'm enjoying it. I think it's super fucking fun. My ribs hurt quite a bit. I was sparring with my fucking coach and he wasn't, um, he said, um, I'm not really, uh, I, I put my, motherfucker says, put your hands up. So I'm putting my hands up, right? But I'm putting my hands up way too high. Like you kind of need to do here, right? Cause then you can block your, your ribs and stuff. Uh, I wasn't doing that. So he showed me that I was making a mistake by just fucking uppercutting me right in the ribs. So still a bit, bit hurt, but really enjoying it. Hopefully next month, July, I've got my first fight. Uh, obviously amateur, just a bit of fun. Uh, I just want to test myself, you know? Uh, yeah, cool. Next question. John underscore Burton 03 says, what is the best way to obtain your first model, especially when you're first starting out? Super simple, bro. First of all, go ahead and join our course. That explains everything in there. Uh, we we'll give you seven ways of how to actually get your first couple of clients. But if you're watching this video still to this uh, part, leave a like on the video. That's step number two. But actually, please, that would help a lot. If you just leave a like on the video, I really appreciate it. No, but set number three, which is actually how you do it. Um, reach out to girls who you already know. Maybe your exes, maybe you went to school, university, college with them, whatever. Maybe you just know somebody from your hometown. Reach out to those girls. Those will be your uh, best clients to start off with because they already know, like, and trust you. Super simple. Last question is from uh, Anona Agency. Anon Anax and Agency. Annex and agency. Uh, what's, uh, when's the Dubai meetup happening? Great question. Very, very soon. Right now, I'm in Riga in Latvia. On the 1st of July, I'm doing a completely free mastermind and I cannot fucking wait for it. I'm gonna do an entire little after movie so you guys can uh, see kind of how it happened and, and what went down. Um, that's happening on the 1st of July and I guarantee you there's gonna be another one probably even this year, probably this year, and it might be in Dubai. Uh, so with all of that being said, thank you very much for watching this video. Thank you for actually asking all these questions. These questions were asked on my Instagram. So next time, if you wanna be featured in one of these videos and you wanna shout out, go ahead and follow my Instagram should be somewhere here at Marcus Hustle. Super fucking simple. Go ahead and follow me. Next time I put up a story with the questions of Q and A's, go ahead and ask a question and you'll get a little shout out and a little cameo in the video. But guys, thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this one. Yeah, I'm going to go back to conquering Latvia. Take care.